island of St. Lucia is a major attraction for visitors from all over the world throughout the year. And in the days when the tourism product was just maturing, the peak season for visitor arrivals were the winter months in Europe and North America. These were the regions that initially provided the island with its major source markets. However, this is quickly becoming a thing of the past, as the island continues to diversify its tourism product, attracting visitors from many source markets, including the Caribbean, the UK, Europe, the United States and Canada. In this series, the rebranding of a destination through festivals and events, we explore this side of St. Lucia's tourism product. We also take a look back at the first two events in 2017 under the Soleil Summer Festival's branding. St. Lucia boasts of entering the tourism sector in the late 60s and since then has seen tourism grow to become the island's main economy second once only to the banana industry. Dominic Fede, who is the island's tourism, information and broadcasting minister, worked within the island's vital tourism sector prior to becoming a minister. He has observed firsthand some of the progressive changes to the all-important industry. When I came in, uh, People were talking about um, promoting destinations with sun, sand, and sea. And I think that the Caribbean had began realizing that it was guilty of um, neglecting other parts of the product. So like the adventure that some of the islands have to offer, the romance, the wealth of heritage that exists in the various destinations. And what we have found now is destinations now uh, having an, an aggressive aspiration to uh, better brand themselves and promote themselves. So now we're talking about experiential travel. And we're showing that research suggests that people are looking for more than a beach. Not just now, but 25 years ago. And so they're looking for a destination where uh, the people are vibrant, where its color uh, is very lively, and where its culture is, is rich, and its cuisine is very prominent as part of that product. Part of the product is having a brand to market and sell. So what is Brand St. Lucia? Well, for a long time we've um, been simply beautiful St. Lucia, and that has worked wonders. Um, I think Brand St. Lucia is very strong when you talk to the tour operators and you talk to the trades, they see St. Lucia as um, a destination that is different from the others uh, simply because of a number of different things. It's the only island you can have um, peaks like the Pitons. The volcano uh, is one of its kind in this part of the world. The uh, history of its people, uh, extremely friendly, rivers coming out to its coast, makes it extremely um, different and interesting and very appealing to the average traveler. Over the years, the island has also explored various niche markets, including nature heritage, weddings and honeymoons, tours, and even health and wellness. However, with a people as vibrant as the island itself, with a penchant to celebrate at every occasion, the island now invites the world to join in on the exhilarating street parties, festivals in the arts, heritage and culture, as well as other special events. Well, the weddings market is almost 15% of uh, the total arrivals to the country. Romance is pretty big. And we have made a name for ourselves in the romance business over the last 15 years. Uh, we have seen uh, that in about nine years or so, we have won the world's leading honeymoon destination, including seven consecutive years um, holding that title. And that says a lot about the respect, um, about the expectation of travelers um, when they're coming to us. So we've been pretty strong in, in romance. We can only grow from there, but 
Um, there are other niches as well that we can extract, the cultural and the heritage niche, the um, mixture of French and English uh, heritage that we, uh, that we have is very, very special. And, and we need to continue to leverage that with the African and the um, colonial past that we have. In 1971, St. Lucia established the very first St. Lucia Tourist Board, an entity that has worked well as being St. Lucia's sole tourism marketing and promotions agency over the years. However, under the new direction, rebranding the destination and consolidating the mandate, the island moves in the direction of a tourism authority. The rationale though, to answer you more specifically as it pertains to why we're going to uh, the tourism authority, has to do with um, better streamlining the marketing efforts of the destination. So now this year we've had the same 34 million, but it's a lot more strategic in this approach. Uh, it's a lot more potent in terms of what we spend on the core of marketing the destination. We are expected to have an additional 2,000 rooms in the next four years. And to grow capacity, not only do we need more rooms, but we've got to also sell um, the destination. What we have done is that we have worked through tour operators. The strategy now is to push the destination front and center of the branding uh, position of the country. So what we are going to focus on and prioritize is Brand St. Lucia more than anything else, more than any one of our partners. And we bring our partners on board so that St. Lucia is projected first. A new entity, Events Company of St. Lucia, has now been established to manage events which originally fell under the purview of the St. Lucia Tourist Board, as well as other entities like the Cultural Development Foundation and the Folk Research Center. The minister responsible for tourism explains this rationale. It took away the responsibility of um, the big events. So, for example, the Jazz Festival, which consumed a lot of the not just the financial resources of the former entity, the St. Lucia Tourist Board, but it also consumed a lot of the human capital. And it sort of distracted them, and the organization was less focused as it pertained to its main role. And its main role is to market St. Lucia as a tourist destination. So with Event St. Lucia, you brought um, better expertise, you put a lot more effort into um, organizing some of your national events. So for example, um, the Jazz Festival was at a different standard from all of our national cultural um, showpiece. And we're saying that if we can spend as much money to promote a Jazz Festival um, in, and put such an effort uh, in the events management component, then we can also do so to some of our indigenous festivals, so like Carnival, um, Creole Heritage Month. Thomas Leos is the CEO of Events Company of St. Lucia. He explains the mandate of the entity. Events Company of St. Lucia was established to centralize the production of a number of different festivals which were occurring on the island um, well, some as, how many decades ago. Um, and of course these festivals were produced by a number of different entities, a number of disparate entities. You have the case of the Jazz Festival being produced by the St. Lucia Tourist Board. And the primary mandate of the St. Lucia Tourist Board was to market St. Lucia as a brand outside of St. Lucia, but not necessarily to produce an event. Mm -hmm. You also had um, Carnival being produced by the Cultural Development Foundation. I'm not sure which entity produced it before the CDF. And there have been a number of different entities connected to the CDF that's been producing Carnival. You've had the Stakeholders Committee, you've had the CPMA, and so forth. And you also had the um, arts and heritage um, elements of, of our culture being produced by FRC. But the FRC's primary mandate was to you know, research our folk history and, and present that to the public. So the thinking was to centralize the production of all these festivals into one entity. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a similar standard in production and was presented to the public across the range of festivals um, that were being produced. Mm -hmm. That was the whole idea behind centralizing the production so the quality remains the same, at least consistency in the production and, and in the presentation. With the Ministry of Tourism now being the central focus on the economic development of tourism, as well as setting policies and guidelines, greater synergies are now created with the Department of Culture and Events Company of St. Lucia 
as well as the tourism authority. The marketing is done by the tourism authority and Events St. Lucia would deal with some of the soft product development which would bring into um, the mix events management so that they would organize the festival. So when I look at um, uh, the Solar Music Festival, when I look at the um, Jazz Festival, the um, Creole Heritage Month, all of these allow us to go and market a different event, a different component of our culture and to say to the visitor that we are a destination that's more than a beach. The Ministry of Culture and Local Government is the ministry to which the Events Company of St. Lucia reports. Senator, the Honorable Fortuna Belrose heads this ministry. One of the major um, pronouncements by our Prime Minister was that he wanted to see the arts and our culture contribute much, in a much greater way um, to the gross domestic product of St. Lucia. Um, and of course, within St. Lucia, we've got a number of major cultural events happening, most of which were underneath the banner of the Cultural Development Foundation. Um, but as we look at it, and as we, we've seen in the research, and consultants have also done some work, um, it was necessary to form an events company that would take care of the production of most of the national events that we have, because we believe that these events can assist us um, in a very meaningful way in terms of attracting more people to our shows and more importantly creating a greater level of consciousness about from our people in terms of the economic vibe um, the economic value that they bring um, to our country events company of st lucia is now responsible for producing six festivals under what is known as the soleil st lucia summer of festivals these include a more streamlined st lucia jazz festival roots and soul festival st lucia carnival Country and Blues and Arts and Heritage Month. So the thinking behind grouping all of those festivals on the Soleil brand was really to give a sense of um, confidence to patrons at those festivals or, or the respective events that this event is being produced by the events company of St. Lucia. And therefore, when I go to that event, I expect things to be a certain way. Um, so events company on the solar is producing jazz, they're producing carnival, they're producing arts and heritage, returns and what have you. So when I attend, I expect security to be at a certain level. I expect the sound system to be at a certain quality. I expect the, the spectacle on the stage to be produced at a certain level. I expect the show to run on time. I expect the changeovers to take place on time. So that's why branding is important so that you know that when I attend an event or a festival put on by this entity, this is what I should expect all the time. Solai represents the endless and the, the abundance of energy um, that we do have um, in, 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 our, in our region. Um, but more importantly, it was to find that brand um, that would really symbolize all the events um, that we are offering to citizens and also foreigners to our shows um, during the summer. Uh, and so the, the Soleil brand was born um, as a result of that. Um, and of course, Soleil meaning energy, you understand, vitality, um, and of course, showcasing what we as a country have to offer throughout the summer period. And we believe, of course, as the events grow, um, as we continue to build the capacity in some of the other events locally, um, for example, our La Rose, our La Marguerite, eventually some of these will become part of that package that we sell off um, to the rest of the world. For the government of St. Lucia, the positive spin-offs from these events are now far-reaching. No longer is it about filling up hotel rooms during the traditional low tourism period. The idea is to now use these events to market brands St. Lucia throughout the year, so that our people can derive not only the economic benefits, but will also be engaged in many of the technical aspects that come with the staging of such world-class events. Well, one of the legacies of the Jazz Festival has been the events management capacity of our country. That has certainly risen to um, higher heights. And I think that um, the, the economic spin-offs uh, to local uh, business people, to small business people, uh, has been, the story has been told for many years. And I think that they will continue to benefit from that. I think you'll see greater patronage from the local community to our various festivals. In terms of the wider economy as well. Um, there are a number of services that need to be engaged in putting on a festival. Um, like I said, you have security is very key for all those events. Um, so 
the companies are local security companies who hire persons to provide security services in, in quite large numbers. You have ground transportation, so taxi services, um, the persons we bring in from overseas have to be transported from the, um, the airport to the hotel, so the local taxis benefit from that. Um, they have to be transported from the hotel to the performance venue, so transportation services benefit in that way. Um, you have caterers. Um, persons have to cater to the needs of the artists when they come here. So, um, and some of them have very demanding requirements, uh, but we don't fly in caterers from outside to do that. So, it's local, uh, locals will benefit from that. Um, even at the events themselves, when patrons attend, people will need to eat and drink. Um, so, the concession is there, um, who usually don't operate on a year round basis, will get the opportunity to make some money um, at those events. Um, of course, we have um, local DJs who, who play a role during the intermission. We have local artists who provide, um, if they are not on the main stage themselves, but they may um, have a, a side show um, during the events. We have MCs um, who work. So there's quite a large number of different persons who provide services to ensure the festival is put on at the highest level. So, I mean, the, the effect is quite far-reaching in terms of the number of different sectors that are involved in, in putting on the event. The first event, which was staged by the events company of St. Lucia, was the St. Lucia Jazz Festival a more streamlined event in 2017, offering jazz purists more straight-ahead jazz and world beat music. The event was held from May 12th to 14th and featured international acts such as Vanessa Williams, Kenny Garrett, Richard Bonner and Mandican Cubano, Malavoie, David Rudder, Andy Narell and Rachel Farrell among many others. The festival also saw a number of St. Lucian acts taking it to the main stage. In 1992, we introduced the St. Lucia Jazz Festival. 2014 brought us the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival. Welcome to 2017, the St. Lucia Soleil Summer Festival. Come, let's join me for the jazz component. <laughs> Suite. I went sailing today with uh, uh, Henry, who plays uh, keyboards. He's a he's a, a sailor, so he took me out, and we we went out uh, out of the cove and went up and down uh, the coastline. People have been tremendous and lovely. Uh, I had some stew fish this morning, which was delicious, or saltfish. You, you say saltfish, yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I'm loving the hospitality and uh, just relaxing on Mother's Day. Even though this is work, it feels like a vacation. <laughs> The Minister with Responsibility for Tourism, Dominic Fede, says 2017 was a learning curve for the rebranding and the new direction of the St. Lucia Jazz Festival. The main function and the main purpose was to promote St. Lucia as a tourist destination. And so we had to now repackage the festival, rebrand, and bring something fresh to the media market internationally mm -hmm. so that we can rekindle that interest and passion about writing um, about some of St. Lucia's um, festivals. The CEO of Events Company of St. Lucia says that the capacity building and training is also part of the mandate moving forward. There were years um, when quite a large number of persons were brought in from outside to produce the festivals mm -hmm. and I've seen that number dwindle over time and that's because the capacity has been built up locally. Um, so the, the, the sound system provider doesn't necessarily have to come from overseas anymore. I think we've had um, individuals making significant investments in equipment down here mm -hmm. to give you that, that, that quality that can rival any festival anywhere in the world. Um, then you have the question of even the production of the festival, the whole stage management and artist management. I've seen capacity building taking place in that area um, when it comes to our concert type productions. <laughs>
In June, the second event under the Soleil umbrella, the Roots and Soul Festival was born. The event was staged at the Pigeon Island National Landmark on June 17th and 18th, 2017. As we continue on our journey with the newly introduced Soleil St. Lucia Summer Festival, join me for two days of Roots and Soul. country that uh, embraces us differently you know what I mean like there's something there's some sort of something majestic about what we do something exotic that they, they cling to so I being over there made me embrace that aspect of myself a lot more so the music that I performed tonight that was new uh, was a testament to that winter in St. Lucia which was one of the songs that was you know in a way one of the hardest for me to perform but one of the most important for me it definitely is uh, an amazing feeling to see that your hard work that you eventually reap what you sow um, sometimes uh, the harvest takes a longer time to get there but when it does it's very very fruitful <laughs> so i feel amazing acts that we featured for Roots and Soul, I think about six were local, mm -hmm. yeah? And those were persons who may not have had an opportunity in a typical jazz festival to perform on an international stage. But so some names came forth that we would not have heard before, like a, a Diana Phillips is a case in point, uh, Chrissy Shalma is another case in point, even Keo is another case in point, who featured at the Roots and Soul Festival, and I think the production that they put on was of international standard. Mm -hmm. but they might not have had the opportunity in the one jazz festival as it was constructed before. So by broadening and breaking out the festivals, you give more persons who have interest in different musical genres to come forth and really present themselves at that scale. Leos also believes that the reasoning behind having these events spread throughout the year will result in positive dividends in time. Prior to the formation of the events company and the establishment of Solai brand, um, we had a heavy concentration of um, well, it's a music festival, but it was what happened in May, and there are different genres of music within that festival, but it was called a jazz festival, mm -hmm. nonetheless. Um, so what has happened is now it has we have tried to break up the music component of the festivals into different genres, so to appeal to different tastes. So jazz is now really jazz, mm -hmm. and that appeals to a certain market uh, in the US, which is a big source market for us, and also um, the French Antilles which I think has provided the largest number of visitors for jazz over the years. Eh? Um, mm -hmm. You might think it may be the US, mm -hmm. but I think uh, visitors to jazz from Martinique has outstripped every other territory significantly over the years. Eh? So that's a ready market we can tap into for jazz. And then we had the carnival. They also play a big role in our carnival. We had a group visiting from Guadeloupe uh, who took part in our carnival parade. So the French territory is a very significant source market for visitors to all those festivals. in St. Lucia grows not only as a destination but one renowned for staging world-class events. So too will the opportunities for our artisans and service providers 
as this 238 square mile island paradise invites the world to share in our culinary experience, our music, our culture, our passion. Of course, one of the festivals where that passion and sense of national excitement is very evident is Dream St. Lucia's Carnival, one of the island's annual major cultural showpieces. And this is where the spotlight falls. For the second in this series, the rebranding of a destination through art, festivals and events, as we take a look back at St. Lucia's Carnival 2017 and the Arts and Heritage Month with a little blues thrown in between.